part three. I know it's a long one. Um, and other studies show that most of the patients report that they have improved mental health and functioning after receiving gender affirming care. Medically supervised care can also reduce rates of harmful self prescribed hormones, use of construction grade silicone injections, and other interventions that have potential to cause adverse effects, especially not under the care of physicians. It is vital that transgender minors be given the opportunity to explore their gender identity under safe and supportive care of a physician. Arkansas and Texas's laws and others like it move to make it more unsafe to exist as a trans person, not only in the medical field, but also in general society. Med many medical professionals under Texas and Arkansas's laws view them to be a dangerous intrusion into the practice of medicine and they strongly urge the NGA, National Governors Association, and its members to oppose these transphobic laws. More proponents of trans rights, in this case, the American Civil Liberties Union, moved to sue Texas Governor Abbott to, due to his transgender minor order that was proposed on March 1st, 2022. The order demanded that the Department of Family and Protective Services in Texas launch child abuse into investigations against parents who help their children medically transition. This ill-conceived direction from the Texas governor will put at-risk children at even higher risk of anxiety, depression, self-harm, and suicide and abuse from unsupportive family members if they're forced to leave their so only supporting family, right? Gender-affirming care promotes the health and wellness of transgender youth, and it is provided by medical and mental health professionals based on well-established scientific research. The American Psychological Association. On the same day of March 1st, the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, a group that fights to protect fundamental constitutions, constitutional rights and liberties, filed a lawsuit to stop the order from going into, the, into effect. The ACULU wrote that the opponents are trying to trample on the constitutional rights of transgender children, their parents, and professionals who provide vital care to transgender children. The opponents or conservatives have, without constitutional or stationary, stationary ugh, authority, acted to create a new definition of child abuse that signals out a subset of loving parents for scrutiny, investigation, and family separation. Their actions have caused terror and anxiety among transgender youth and their families across Texas and singled out transgender youth for discrimination and harassment. The work and actions of the governor, attorney general, and commissioner threatens to endanger the health and well-being of transgender youth in Texas by depriving them of Medicare, medically necessary care, while also communicating that transgender people and their families are not welcome in Texas. Following the, re the recent attempts by opponents to change the definition of child abuse under Texas law, experts in pediatric medicine, endocrinology, mental health care, and social work issue statements condemning the action. They also warned that it was counter to established protocol for treating gender dysphoria, could force providers to violate their own ethics and ethics of just general medical practice, and would cause substantial harm to minors and, fam and their families in Texas. The president of the American Psychological Association also states that the research suggests that transgender children and youth who are treated with a affirmation of their identities and receive evidence-based treatments tend to see improvements in their mental and physical well-being. The APA president condemns the Texas governor's directive saying they are trying to criminalize the act of providing necessary medical care for trans kids and teens with medical professionals in accordance with applicable standards of care. Then the ACLU announces the lawsuit against Texas to block the motion. The opponent's actions cause immeasurable harm to both parents and young people threatening family separation and lack any legitimate justification at all, let alone a constitutionally adequate one. This is not a narrowly drawn policy that respects plaintiffs' fundamental due process rights to parent their children. The Abbott letter violates the Texas Constitution by denying transgender youth protection under the law. In this case, while the opponents take their opinions out on transgender youth, their argument is weaker because it does not take into consideration that caring for your child in whatever way they need is a good thing. Like, they're only doing it to receive political influence and power over others, just taking advantage of it. Because they can demonize them because trans people are a minority, right? 
Parents who support their kids are not abusing them. Instead, they are giving them the much-needed support that they need, especially as the Texas officials try to criminalize parents and physicians who are trying to help te help kids, trans kids specifically, as well as adding the threat of taking away tr trans kids from their parents. However, trans youth and adults are more commonly subjected to transpho transphobia when it comes to their parents and family members and are often kicked out and abused by their guardians or peers due to their identity. But if the bill goes through, the only... The only ones who would face consequence for those so-called abuse is the parents who set up care and protect their child. On the other hand, both proponents for trans rights, American Civil Liberties Union, and James Randa, chief executor, executive officer of the American Medical Association, AMA, are fighting against the opponents of use. They, they are pointing out the damage such actions will do to trans youth and how their actions only harm the trans community, which all, already faces intense amount of stigma in society. On a more personal level, I was someone who did not come out as trans until I was in my late teens, and I was not accepted by my father, who I was living with at the time, and it was not a safe environment. I dealt severely with dysphoria, not only going through puberty early when I was nine, but also as a teen and an adult, and as a result, I dealt with anxiety, panic attacks, and depression based on the physical things that were changing as a kid. As well, oops, as well as the things I did not know that I could change. Even though I did not have the words to describe why I felt different, I did. However, I... I did, however, recognize subconsciously that I did not relate to my birth name or my pronouns. I also did not like the way people saw me or tried to force me to be. But it took me seeing and learning about trans people on my own to discover the, the words that described not only what I was going through, but who I was. They also showed me that I was not alone and it was possible to exist in other ways.